All right, guys, welcome back. And in this video, we're going to look at the CN model sensor um, fuselage parts and tails. So we have the boom, horizontal and vertical stabs, and the uh, nose pod. And we'll also look at some of the little hardware and bits that it comes with. So we'll start with the boom here. This is a carbon square uh, rudder post that's pre-installed from the factory. We have a really nice uh, pylon here. Quality on this this boom is just spectacular. And some raised bosses with metal inserts, uh, threaded metal inserts right there for uh, screwing down in, uh, the elevator. And we have this uh, molded plastic control horn. It has a ball link on it, which is kind of in the in this uh, pylon here. And uh, I'm guessing some tapping screws would go in here and attach it to the elevator. There's no uh, well, actually there are threads in there. There are molded in threads. So that's kind of neat. An alignment pin in the front for the vertical stab. Um, this is how the the rudder push rod exits. I have already gone ahead and glued on this uh, L bend. This L bend and brass piece came with the hardware pack, and I kind of skipped ahead a little bit and I installed that already. But when you get the model, you have to glue it on yourself. Rest of the boom. Let me flip it around. And uh, this is the part that slips onto the uh, nose pod. And there's, there's, a, there's a plywood servo tray that gets installed here. Carbon push rods are already installed. And the neat thing on this guy is there's a multiplex connector already installed. And it's wired up. It's got two... Uh, Servo leads here, which actually go this way, so these would go back back this way and connect to your servos. And it's got a little, uh, like a little slot here. This is where the uh, nose pod is going to jig into this. So theoretically, the pod will slip onto this, and it'll jig in place, and it won't rotate, and it'll make the connection to your receiver. So that's really nice. We'll weigh all these parts too in a bit. And we have our rudder, pretty standard F5J style, solid core, row of cell foam, carbon over top of that. And that's the uh, joiner box for the rudder post, and a very small carbon pin. Then there's a, a machined carbon control horn here. And I have already uh, glued that in. This came uh, loose, so it wasn't glued in. But the slot was pre-cut, so that was that was nice. And I went ahead and I already glued that in. So there we go. Have a look at the elevator. Again, solid core row cell. Um, very nice quality. Got these uh, countersunk holes here for the hold down screws. Uh, countersunk on both sides, because I, I guess uh, one side accepts the uh, bosses on the pylon and the boom. Fairly small elevator surface or the moving surface compared to other models. So those are the parts. Let me get the nose pod. This is what the pod looks like. Uh, this nose was cut from the factory to 32 millimeters, and I have requested that the next batch of models I get are cut to 30 millimeters. And in here, you can see there's uh, like a plywood bulkhead in there, and then we have the other side of that multiplex connector uh, that mates up to the boom. Wing saddle area, metal threaded inserts, 
raised bosses here that mate to the wing and there's two holes for the connectors for the wing right here but there's no really uh, provisions to kind of solid mount the connectors because these holes are much bigger than the connectors so I was hoping they would just glue in and you could just plug the wing on top but it uh, looks like these connectors sort of just hang loose but maybe we'll look at look at if we can get these uh, connectors hard mounted here's the canopy and it has a nice little uh, notch cut out here so you can get your fingernail under there and this particular model is uh, Got a carbon fiber uh, nose pod. There's a all Kevlar option available as well, and it's got significant carbon reinforcing around the canopy opening, which is nice. This feels uh, pretty beefy. Definitely doesn't feel fragile, and the canopy's all fiberglass, and it's got some uh, molded in uh, like detents that actually make it. Uh, I almost lost it there. <laughs> Anyway, these detents actually make it lock into the nose pods, so you don't have to use tape or anything. Uh, you just basically... Just push it into place and it snaps down and it's on there tight. So now, uh, let's look at some of the hardware that came with this. This isn't the complete hardware baggie because I used the servo covers and some other things for the wings that you guys may have seen in the previous video. They do give you a spare servo cover, so I came with, my kit came here with, uh, with five covers, I guess in case you mess one up. And uh, we have some harness parts for the fuselage. Uh, each of these has servo leads coming off. They could have possibly saved a little bit of weight by uh, combining the positive and negatives and just running one loose signal wire there. Not a big deal. And then there's a plywood servo tray that goes into the boom. And this is cut out for KST X08s. And it does come with a metal uh, motor mount. It's not drilled, so you have to drill it to your own uh, specifications. Pretty heavy too, I must say. And then we just have some uh, screws. I think all these black screws are wing mount screws, so you'd need four, and it looks like they give you a couple of spares. Here, these look to be four millimeter. And then we have the elevator main hold down screws. And we have the elevator control horn hold down screws, and there's a spare of each. And then they give you these little kind of homemade uh, keepers. They're really neat. They're soldered together with some wrapped wire. Um, these are for your connections to connect the push rods to the servos, so they give you two of those. Now let's uh, weigh some of these parts and then we can uh, actually start assembling this thing. So I'll start with uh, probably the rudder here since it's right here. This scale is actually the one I use for mixing epoxy so it's a little grimy. But we'll put a plastic baggie over the top of it there and we'll zero it out and we'll weigh the rudder vertical stabilizer 25 grams and the elevator horizontal 26 grams The nose pod, which I think might be fairly heavy, 107 grams, and we have the boom, 
69 grams and this is a, a light model it's not the FAI light and it's not a windy or a strong model it's just like the regular regular light model so those are the parts weights and if I look well I can't show you but if I look down here to about here I can see that little notch that is supposed to mate in to this guy here and obviously the plugs are supposed to mate up so let's see if we can make all this happen Well, there's still a little bit of a gap and definitely don't want to force it. I have a feeling the plug's not engaging all the way. But uh, anyway, I will look at that further uh, when I start assembling it. I'm sure we can figure that out. So let's start by getting the servos in the boom. Alright. Um... Going to start with putting this uh, ply servo tray in, or getting it in position. And I was trying to figure out uh, which way these offsets go, but I had a picture on my phone uh, from CN, which kind of guided me through it. So uh, I think the little cur curved portion of the tray goes towards the front. And then uh, you want to have the forward hole offset to the left side of the model and this one to the right. And uh, the, the ply tray actually fits in here really well. Um, it seems like it didn't want to fit, but uh, when you drop it in, you can kind of move it, push it down, and it, it seems to fit really well. So um, before I actually glue this in or think about putting the servos in, I'm going to pull this out. And I'm going to sand these areas in here a little bit just to roughen them up. And um, I might actually put a slight bevel on these edges here that way just to let uh, the epoxy be able to have a channel to kind of flow down into and actually bond this edge to the fusel to the to the uh, boom sidewall because otherwise if it's real tight it's just going to be sitting on top here and it won't actually bond this edge so let me do that real quick and Stick it in here under the push rods and scuff this up lightly. I'm not gonna go too crazy with it. And we'll do the other side as well. And then let me get, I'm going to use a Dremel. And so again, uh, this, tr this is going to be the front and this is going to be the top surface. So let me, I'll just put a B here. So I know that's the bottom. And then I'm just going to take my Dremel
that's about all you need really. A little slight bevel on the edge. And then looking for a piece of sandpaper. And I'm just going to just straighten that up a little bit. Again, I'm sanding with the bevel. I'm not sanding the bevel out. Good enough for me. And then I'm going to get, uh, what am I going to get? I'm going to get a Q-tip and dip the end in some alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and I'm just going to clean the surface. That. So we get a good bond. Okay. Now I can put this guy back in. And I also noticed that uh, I actually pre drilled these tiny holes here for the hold down screws. They're just full of saw of uh, sawdust, or uh, when they routed these servo trays out, so I don't have to drill holes. So that's nice. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna put this in. It takes a little bit of finagling. There we go. And I'll check to see if that's level in a bit, but what I want to do is actually get a servo. Stick it in here. See if we can get this in without too much pain. Okay, it's going in here. Is it going in? Because I want to make sure I, I glue this tray in level this way. But I also want to make sure I don't glue it in low so that the uh, servo actually sits on the bottom of the fuse of the boom. I also kind of want to make sure the rods line up where they're supposed to be. side needs to go down. This side has to come up. Just use a stick or, or whatever you have handy to help you coerce the servo of the tray. Get it somewhat level. And I just want to refer back to my picture. And it looks like I might want to slide the tray back a little bit. I 
It's going to be tight here though, putting that uh, keeper on. Let me grab one of those keepers. So I'm going to have to trim the push rod, obviously. And which one is that? That's the elevator. So I'm going to actually push this forward a little bit. That's looking okay. But it's not level. So let me go ahead and I'm going to level this tray up again like I did before. And then uh, I'm going to tack it in with some CA. Well, I got the uh, tray in a position that I liked. And I just used two drops of CA on both sides to tack it in sort of temporarily. And then I put the servos in just to make sure everything fits well and the push rods are lined up. And I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm going to take the servos out again, and then I'm going to run a small bead of epoxy down each side just to make it really strong and permanent. And then after I do that, uh, we can make up the control horns here for the servos and uh, hook up the uh, push rods to the, uh, to the uh, servo arms, I should say, not control horns, servo arms. And... Um, that basically wraps up the uh, servo installation. Um, I did take a X-Acto knife and sort of I just kind of scraped the edges of the connector all the way around to put a little bit of a uh, bevel on it and it does seem to fit better. Still very tight so I'm gonna keep kind of thinking about how to make this uh, fit a little better because I don't want to really grab this boom really hard to try to pull it out because you could probably damage your boom. Okay, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get, get this stuff epoxied in. So I have some high quality epoxy on both the edges. It's a 24 hour cure with a little bit of cabosil mixed in. Uh, so that tray is going to be nice and secure. And then I've gone ahead and prepped some of the servos, or both the servos I should say, not some. And the first thing I did was uh, put just a little bit of hot glue over the exposed wires back here on both servos just because this is carbon down here and they're not contacting the floor, they're a few millimeters above it, but I just want to have a little extra insurance. And then I've put the uh, arms on, so I have a arm for the rudder that's the uh, kind of the cross arm and I'm going to use the second hole and then for the elevator it's the same uh, arm but I'm going to use the third hole and again this is a cross arm it's not the um, it's not that single arm um, I actually found that the holes in the single arm are slightly bigger than this cross arm and uh, the keeper is a little sloppy in this but fits really good nice and snug in this one so that's kind of strange you'd think they'd all be the same size holes but they're not so I'm gonna uh, actually go ahead and uh, kind of bolt these in and see what things look like okay I countered a small issue with this um, I need to move the servo location slightly I need to move each servo basically further away from the push rod so this servo needs to go about two millimeters that way and this one I'm gonna move about two millimeters this way and the reason for that is that um, the push rods when I hooked everything up just the way it came just the way the kit came uh, when I when I uh, moved the rudder push rod this thing was hitting the boom right here and obviously that's not a good situation and I didn't want to make any cuts here or relieve it here um, so really that's not a big deal just to uh, make those holes a little bigger uh, but the problem I ran into was that the plastic sleeve for this push rod which goes down the boom um, was glued all the way 
basically to like right here and didn't give this push rod any kind of give to be able to to be able to like bend in a little bit that I needed to so what I did was I, I pulled the push rod out slightly and I put a, a metal rod in and just kind of um, bent it out and I could hear uh, the, the glue bond kind of start to break so now I've basically debonded that push rod in, in about two inches or uh, I don't know 40, mil 40 50 millimeters or so right here so now I can get uh, some nice little just uh, deflection going so when I move the servo that, that uh, push rod will follow it and uh, on this side I didn't do that because uh, we have more carbon exposed and actually the uh, plastic housing uh, has a little bit of give in this area so it wasn't necessary so I'm gonna go ahead and um, open up these bays a little bit and then we'll see if we can get the uh, push rods or the servos in and all the stuff connected pretty happy with the way this came out uh, after I made some minor adjustments to the push rods push rod sleeves and I space these holes a little differently looking really good this stuff isn't uh, glued together yet so the next thing to do is to uh, put the tails on and then we're gonna have to mark these carbon rods exactly where we need them and then uh, clip them down and then we can um, glue the carbon push rods to these metal keepers and uh, one check I did is I just took a straight edge like this and ran it across the boom just to make sure it's not contacting the servo arms or the push rods or the keepers anywhere and it's not so I'm really happy with that so let's go ahead and get the tails on and trim up our carbon rods alright the rudder is on and I have the uh, L bend hooked up here to the control horn again I um, already glued this stuff together as I said before and I have a bit of tape here holding the rudder in uh, the neutral position so with that in place uh, now we can mark the push rod so I'm going to get a uh, silver paint pen and I'm just going to mark this carbon rod I'm going to mark it about Oh, three or four millimeters in front of the uh, end of the receptacle here like so and then we'll clip this when we do the elevator push rod as well like that so let's get the elevator on next elevators on and I did the same thing with the tape just to keep it uh, in neutral and now I'm going to do the exact same thing and mark the elevator push rod same exact procedure obviously we ensured that um, our servos are in neutral and the arms are centered before we do this and again I'm gonna give myself about three or four millimeters in front of this receptacle here because I want uh, the glue that we use to be on the back and the front of of this metal piece to kinda help lock it in place so there we go now we need to cut these And to do that, I think I'm going to just leave the servos in place. I'm just going to move the arms. You really shouldn't do this. You should use a servo tester, but being impatient right now. And oh, actually, I need to um, take the tails off. Okay, so the tails are off and. Uh, the control horns are disconnected and I was able to 
get these rods to pull out a little more so I could work with them. And uh, you could use side cutters to cut them, but they tend to kind of crush and fray. So I like to use uh, some kind of cutting tool in this case since I have pretty good access. I'm just going to use a Dremel with a cutoff wheel. And I always keep these little extra bits because uh, they're really useful for uh, applying epoxy and things. So I have a little tray with all the little push rod scraps in it. And we have the elevator side. There we go. And then what I like to do is, because it kind of leaves a rough edge, I take a file. And I just try to get like a little point on it. Just so it goes in the the keeper easily, and it doesn't catch an edge and kind of tear the carbon, and you, and you end up with a strand coming off the push rod. I'll do this one too. Okay, that all looks good. Uh, now we need to scuff these guys up a little bit. So I got some coarse sandpaper and I'm just gonna do my best to scuff it up all the way around. Like that, same thing on this guy. Now what I like to do is, I use a file and I get, um, I use kind of like one of the sharp edges. And what I'm going to do is just file a few notches to give the uh, glue that I'm going to use somewhere to bite. Like that, and that's what the notches look like right there. So, let me clean this up a little bit. And again, I'm going to uh, use a little bit of uh, rubbing alcohol, and I'm just going to clean up the ends of these push rods because we want to get the best bond that we possibly can. Cleaning up and getting the dust off of your parts that you're going to bond together is pretty important and I would say often overlooked. 
Okay, time to actually glue these things together. And I'm going to be using some JB Weld. I like using JB Weld uh, for these connections because it uh, seems to stick to metal pretty well and to the carbon. And I've been using it for years and never had uh, one of these connections fail. I've seen people use CA also with success but I tend to avoid CA as much as possible and tend to use epoxies um, and uh, longer curing glues just, you know stronger glues because CA can be brittle and I don't really mind waiting for things to dry because there's always other things to do while this stuff is curing so we'll get this mixed up really well Okay, and I've uh, removed the control arms just to make life easier. And we'll start with the uh, rudder connection, I think. So I have the keeper here, and I'm just going to try to get a little bit in the hole. And then put a little bit on the push rod, obviously. And we can do some cleanup afterwards if need be. Now let's see if we can slide these parts together. Again, the tails are on the boom and they're taped in the neutral position. the horn on and uh, this horn I couldn't get the horn on with the servo centered so it's slightly offset so I'm gonna have to use the uh, servo tester to get it uh, to neutral so it will require some sub trim in the programming Okay. And I'm just going to clean this up a little bit with a T pin. Kind of get rid of some of the excess. And then I'm going to put some forward. This will really help lock it in. And again, we have those notches 
that we made which will allow the glue to uh, really lock into place, bite into the carbon okay that looks pretty good to me do the same thing on the elevator side and put some on the rod we have a little more room to work with on on this push rod so I'm going to try to grab it and bend it up a little bit and get some JB weld everywhere And we'll slide the keeper on. get the horn in place. Again I need to center with the servo tester because the horn is not exactly perpendicular looks good And I will clean up the excess bit. some forward That's basically that's done. Um, double check your tails and make sure they're still in neutral. They they can move sometimes. Let me just do that real quick. This is looking pretty good. Okay. There we go. That basically completes the uh, push rod setup. Um, I still have to put the screws in the servos to hold the arms down, but I'll do that when that JB weld is fully cured. All right, guys, I want to wrap up this uh, sensor um, build video series. Um, 
I did. I go. I went ahead and installed the uh, motor and prop and spinner on the nose pod. So I installed a uh, CNC motor mount here, and um, that's a pretty standard procedure. I got a CN uh, Pro spinner, and I believe these are Vita 10 by 6 props. I got an O-ring to keep them folded, and there's a, a direct drive mega motor in here. That's just what my customer requested, so that's what I put in. Um, that's basically all I'm going to do as far as the build goes. There is the question of these wire harness parts that go in the fuselage. There's there's two of them, and you now I was looking at it, and I really couldn't um, see any like way to mount them for like a plug-and-play setup. Um, these holes are too big for the connectors; they just go right through. And the problem is that the connectors are mounted uh, perpendicular with each side panel, so when they're they're in, they're like angled and obviously you can't plug the wing straight in because these plugs are angled so you can't do that so they're probably just gonna have to come out here and just flow out and then you plug them in and put the wing on um, I'm gonna leave that up to my customer so he has to uh, do the receiver install the altitude device put his battery in here however he wants and do the CG and uh, when he gets all that done and he programs the model, we'll go out and fly it together and I will get video of that. So um, don't worry about that. We will get like sort of a flight review or flight test in. Um, one, one last thing. I want to make a comment on the boom. So I did have to do quite a bit of work on the the boom here there's a 3d printed bulkhead that this plug uh, connects to or is glued into and there's a gap between that 3d printed part and the plug and basically what I found was that the gap was too small so the tolerances were too tight so when the uh, other end of this plug slid in it was basically binding up against the uh, sidewall of the 3d printed part so I Went in there with uh, files and sandpaper and a little one millimeter grinding bit on my Dremel tool and just opened up that gap and I managed to get this fitting much easier. It's still somewhat tight but I think it'll um, basically wear in over time so basically we have to get it seated from this point right so so that's it. It seats real nicely and there's there's no gap here now. And it takes basically uh, a little bit of force to pull it apart. Um, not too bad at all actually. So once you put those together you just run some tape on here and just make sure when you're pulling this apart that there's nothing behind your rudder you might smash into when you're when you're pulling it apart. Uh, I have talked to CN models about that and we kind of worked together on some dimensioning and stuff. So uh, we made some changes there to that 3D printed part so future models should fit together uh, without any modifications needed um, to the tail boom assembly. And I think that'll basically wrap it up. Um, again, I'm going to wait for my customer to get all his gear in here, receiver, battery and uh, CG this thing and program it and then when that's all done we will see you again right here with a uh, flight test or flight review video so I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, CN sensor uh, build thread or build series and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one